Good evening, brothers and sisters. Uh, thank you for joining us here for our Bible class tonight. Today, as you see on the slide, we are going to be talking about Jesus, the Good Shepherd, and we're going to be reading from John chapter 10. So if you want to turn your Bibles to John chapter 10, our text is going to be from verse 1 through verse 21. Now, we've all heard about Jesus being the Good Shepherd, but what makes Christ the Good Shepherd? One of the most famous chapters in all the Bible is Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd. As we have studied the life of Christ, something incredible to note is how, he, how each of the gospel writers paint amazing pictures of who Jesus is and how much he loves us. And so this chapter that we're going to be reading today is no different. Let's start out by reading John chapter 10, verse 1 through 21. He says, I can guarantee this truth. I'm reading from God's Word translation. The person who doesn't enter the sheep pen through the gate, but climbs in somewhere else is a thief or a robber. But the one who enters through the gate is the shepherd. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep respond to his voice. He calls his sheep by name and leads them out of the pen. After he has brought out all his sheep, he walks ahead of them. The sheep follow him because they recognize his voice. They won't follow a stranger. Instead, they will run away from a stranger because they don't recognize his voice. Jesus used this illustration as he talked to the people, but they didn't understand what he meant. Jesus emphasized, I can guarantee this truth. I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before I did were thieves or robbers. However, the sheep didn't respond to them. I am the gate. Those who enter the sheep pen through me will be saved. They will go in and out of the sheep pen and find food. A thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But I came so that my sheep will have life and so that they will have everything that they need. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. A hired hand isn't a shepherd and doesn't own the sheep. When he sees a wolf coming, he abandons the sheep and quickly runs away. So the wolf drags the sheep away and scatters the flock. The hired hand is concerned about what he's going to get paid and not about the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep as the Father knows me. My sheep know me as I know the Father. So I give my life for my sheep. I also have other sheep that are not from this pen. I must lead them. They too will respond to my voice. So they will be one flock with one shepherd. The Father loves me because I give my life in order to take it back again. No one takes my life from me. I give my life of my own free will. I have the authority to give my life. And I have the authority to take my life back again. This is what the Father ordered me to do. The Jews were divided because of what Jesus said. Many of them said, he's possessed by a demon. He's crazy. Why do you listen to him? Others said, no one talks like this if he's possessed by a demon. Can a demon give sight to the blind? So to really grasp what Jesus is telling us, we need to understand what it meant to take care of sheep in Christ's day. Concerning the care of sheep, there were two main workers. We have the shepherds and we have the doorkeepers or the gatekeepers. So what was the shepherd's job? During the day, the shepherd would, would watch the sheep as they were herded in the open fields. At night, however, the sheep were often herded into a sheep fold or a sheep pen. And it was an enclosure with a single door or a gate. The enclosure could be made of loose rock or, or hedge bushes. And typically, several flocks were put into one pen. In general, shepherds were truly concerned about the welfare of the sheep. However, Jesus makes the point that there, was, there were still some who were only interested in just the pay and were not prepared or were not going to sacrifice much in order to protect the sheep. Now we have the doorkeeper. Who is the doorkeeper? This is the person who watched the gate of the pen. He would guard the gate, make sure no one could come in or out. And each morning, the gatekeeper would open the door. The shepherd would, would call the sheep out. And the sheep would go to the shepherd whose voice 
that they knew. And then the cycle of herding the sheep in the fields would begin all over again. So Jesus says not only that he is the good shepherd, but he is also the door of the sheep, as we read in verses 7 through 10. So what does it mean that Jesus is the door of the sheep? We should allow the Bible to answer the question. In John chapter 10, verse 8, it says, Jesus is the voice that we need to hear. Verse 9 adds that Jesus is the only way to be saved. We are told that his sheep would go in and out and find pasture. So this is telling us that Jesus is the only way to true safety and security. And then in verse 10, he adds that he's going to give us life to the full, abundant life. So if we're trying to find salvation somewhere else, if we're trying to get our comfort, our peace, or our safety from this world, we're not really going to have it. Jesus is the only true way. In verses 11 through 16, Jesus calls himself the good shepherd. So what does he mean by that? Well, he knows his sheep by name. He knows them intimately. He cares for them. And he uses the example of a shepherd protecting his flock when the wolf comes. He leads the sheep. The sheep know his voice. They follow him. He protects the sheep. He says in verse 11, he's willing to die for the sheep. Which other shepherd is going to do that? He is worried about the sheep that are also not in his sheepfold, as he says in verse 16. So this verse is really talking about the Gentiles. We are the people, the Gentiles, that he was referring to when he, when he talked about those sheep that were not from the pen of the Jewish people. So this is how much Jesus loves you. You are his sheep. And Jesus compared, he's comparing himself here to the self-serving Jewish leaders. He kind of calls them thieves and robbers trying to enter the sheep pen any other way except through him. He is the door. So instead of knowing the sheep, these were strangers. They were thieves. They were robbers. Instead of caring for the sheep, they were only worried about getting paid. They were only worried about their own livelihood. So this raises the question of where, it, where, where do we stand here as sheep? You know, who are we listening to? What are the voices that are sometimes trying to get into our head that maybe are competing for the voice of the shepherd? You know, there might be other voices that you are uh, likely to hear. How are you going or where are you going to focus your eyes and your mind? Who are you going to follow? The thieves, the robbers who are only interested in themselves or the good shepherd. So once more in verses 7 and 18, Jesus gives us a small window into the means of his upcoming death. And this is really the ace card that Jesus holds as the good shepherd. Uh, he tells us that one of the reasons that the father loves him is that he is willing to obey, obey unto death. In other words, God gave Jesus the authority to die, to give up his life for the sheep, and also the, the authority to take up his life again. So Jesus is explaining something that no other shepherd had, the authority to give his life for the sheep, to show the sheep how much they need to him but also the authority to take back the life. So that shows that this good shepherd really is in control of life. He holds the key to life and to death. He's also telling us here that he wants us to know that he was going to die, but that was not going to be as a result of bad misfortune or that you know his plan didn't come to fruition. No, his death is actually part of the plan. He is willing to die for the sheep because by his death, he was going to destroy the works of the devil and really truly set in, set in motion the plan of salvation. So to conclude, we see Jesus is the door. He is the good shepherd. And we can see how much Jesus loves and care for us because he's willing to die for us. So are you leading others to the door of the sheep fold? Are you leading others to be under the care and the protection of the good shepherd? May you have a great discussion tonight. God bless you.